Well, listeners, there is a film that is about to hit Australian cinemas that uh, we know a lot of you are excited about, and we know that you're excited about it because you have been messaging us and asking what date the film comes out. Now, the film is called Bookworm, and today we've actually got the director, writer of the film, Ant Timpson, on the phone to chat a little bit about this amazing new film. Welcome to the program, Ant. Hey, Dave. Nice to, nice to be here. No worries. Now, Ant, tell us a little bit about Bookworm. How did this film start out for you? Where did the idea come from? Uh, look, it's Toby, I, uh, the writer in the UK that I write with. I wrote with him on my last film, um, Come to Daddy. So we always start with like a singular idea that's kind of mine from personal trauma. <laughs> so we um, we look to, to sort of um, mind trauma into comedic effects. So this came from like the singular idea of of us as dads kind of um crapping the bed and not stepping up in a time of crisis so that was the that was kind of the idea and it was um i had a, like a terrible family vacay that should have been a really nice little jaunt with the kids when they were younger and uh it ended up with like emergency call out and a lot of blood on rocks and things so it was like how can we kind of um play with us in the wilderness setting we've been talking about making a wilderness film for some time and and also working with elijah wood again and so elijah for good or bad has sort of become this avatar for us to hang all our neuroses as uh, as parents and, and fathers on so yeah bookworm came from that idea and we just thought like what characters would be really good to play up that aspect of a of a de- of a father not being you know not being capable enough having the, the child is the one who seems to be more with it and you know to emasculate them even further we we're like let's make her a, like a an 11 year old girl chuck them in the wilderness of new zealand and see how things pan pan out yeah it's an interesting turn of events for that part of the film because of course we see so many films these days where you have like an absolute deadbeat dad that doesn't have any interest in their child or you have a an abusive father or a drug addicted father to have a father who is trying his best but completely out of his depth is not something that we get to see very often um for you developing that storyline what was that like for you you mentioned that you um, pulled some stuff out of your own personal life, but what was that like sitting down and and trying to develop Strawn as a character, especially with his relationship with his daughter? I mean, it's you know, it just comes from like we we thought that the audience empathy would be with the character if you just show them trying as hard as possible, which is pretty much what parenting is. Yeah. You're constantly just trying. You don't know. There's no you know the rule books thrown out very early on. Uh, and you kind of just wing it in the best of situations. So it's, you know, added to that is this huge gap of a dad who's coming back into his daughter's life um, after never meeting and has all this kind of guilt associated with it. So it was really just a, like a coming of age film told from two different points of view and seeing where um, where the point where they both sort of intersect and and learn a little bit about each other and sort of, you know, understand the other's point of view as well and just you know and the acceptance that eventually comes um between parents and their and their offspring uh and so it was kind of like yeah how to play up that as much as possible inserting a little bit of ourselves into the mix um and then but also so reliant on someone like um elijah wood fronting it as as the dad who comes with so much inherent goodwill it just allows you to kind of really stretch that um, character as far as possible without it becoming too cartoony just because the uh, you know and even in our last film with Elijah he was kind of like m- one of the most insufferable characters on earth but he kind of the audience ends up rooting for him and it's this sort of situation again where um, just on surface level both of these characters could seem annoying as hell but because we kind of there's a little bit of more depth to them and we've got such a wonderful actress Nell Fisher playing the the child um, who just really brings so much, yeah, from her own sort of perspective into that character that it really, um, it kind of works. It really works for us. So, yeah, I don't know if that's a, an exact answer, but it's a roundabout way. Yeah, it is, it is. So, of all the occupations that Strawn could have had, where did the idea come from of making him an illusionist? 
again, we kind of, like in the first film we did with Elijah, he was like a wannabe, um, you know, LA DJ with a, ter- with a terrible haircut and fashion sense. And so we thought if you can make that the guy, the hero of your film, you can do anything really. So uh, looking for someone who, a character that was kind of uh, on the, you know, his star might have shone brightly once, but kind of was on the descent. And we just thought of like, you know, um, roles he could have been in or, and just, I don't know, man, we, there's such a sadness about those illusionists um, that you see kind of at the end of the ropes. Um, and we just thought like there's nothing more tragic than someone who was probably on par with David Blaine, but now is kind of doing balloon animals for Vin Diesel's kids' birthday party. And it just seemed like, the perfect arc for like what Hollywood is as well. <laughs> how, how quickly they just jettison you um, from the limelight. And yeah, and Elijah's just got that experience of um, a child actor who's been through the whole thing and yeah. survived and come out the other side. But And so it was so much fun putting him in that kind of um, your polar opposite role. You mentioned earlier that you really wanted to make a wilderness movie. What was it about making a wilderness movie that that really attracted you and I, I have to ask what were the um the obstacles that you faced during the shoot because i know filming out in the wilderness is not always an easy task to do mm, yeah no i will get to that in a minute but <laughs> so and, to, and choosing um you know just a, a wilderness film it's really because i grew up in that peak period of the 70s where there was a huge string of massive blockbusters um that were kind of just general family entertainment they were family in jeopardy movies they were always set in the wilderness um things like you know the the wilderness family and the sea gypsies and they were just um they, look they're, they're no great works of art and but, but they they kind of felt very relatable um anyone who's sort of experienced that kind of outdoor camping with the family where things bump in the night or, you know, as a kid, your imagination just runs away with it. Um, and it was, a you know, that aspect of non-helicopter parenting, um, not cotton wooling them, just that absolute freedom and, and sense of, like, wonder that there used to be as a kid. It just felt like there was always an adventure over the hill. And then, you know, nowadays with technology and everything, you just Google what's over the hill, you know. You don't even need to explore anymore so it was kind of a throwback and a nostalgic nod to that time in my life where it felt like you know you could disappear in quicksand any weekend the bermuda triangle was a very real thing and so we just wanted to sort of play with that aspect in the wilderness um always loved a wilderness film just like a huge you know the, the mountain men um with charlton heston or all, all these very the man in the wilderness with richard harris i just it was just a big staple of my growing up i just love that aspect and then we sort of stole the title from lee tamahori's wilderness film which is called the edge but the original title for it was um david mamet's script was called bookworm and there's a few similarities uh in that film of, you know if you draw a big enough bow um with our film and so it was kind of a like a nod to lee who's a kiwi and how much we love the edge um we didn't have a bear in ours but we got a panther um and yeah and then but shooting in the wilderness um yeah my naivety thought there's going to be a walk in the park it was a logistical nightmare you're terrified of the weather changing any any second uh so yeah there was a lot of conferencing all the time about what happens if the weather packs in what are we going to do and the crew the poor crew have to lug all this gear to like obscure locations i can see why people just green screen it and shoot on sets um for this sort of stuff in the old days because uh, getting out there and doing it is um it's hard yakka for everyone involved and you do feel um absolutely shattered at the end but just pays off though at the end it just looked stunning the weirdest thing about um uh, bookworm is that it looks so good in a certain sequences that people think we shot on a set because it just looks it doesn't look real in some of the moments yeah yep definitely and yeah there's some moments in there as well where the wilderness also provides another another character to the film as well which works really well now talking of characters we've we've talked a lot about eliza and strawn but uh tell us a little bit about casting mildred with nell fisher she does such an amazing job was she someone that you were already aware of or did you find her during an audition process yeah it's through an audition process uh, she definitely came like um you know recommended from the casting team and so 
she was on on the radar but we did look at 300 kids for the role so it was quite a, a, a big reach out around new zealand to check them all out but you know now um just has that kind of spark <laughs> She's very. She has a lot of similarities with um, with the character as well. She's super intelligent, um, amazingly confident around adults. Like she was not phased at all about the being the only kid on the entire film, on film set. Sorry, you know, cast and crew included. So, just um, a huge amount of confidence. And I checked with um, once we got down to the nitty gritty. I just wanted to make sure because it's a lot to for any actor to be in every frame of the film and to sort of. Uh, you know, it's a it's a long run, and you've got to be kind of you know emotionally, physically, you know spiritually ready to to have the whole film hang on you. So I just want I checked in with the Lee Cronin, the director of Evil Dead Rise, who shot that film in New Zealand, and he had just worked with Nell, and I was just asking about her, and he just said, look, just just get her. She's incredible. Um, you're going to be so happy, and obviously we were, um, and you know during the time. Uh, of the shoot and everything just in pre-production we found out that she'd been cast in stranger things so it was kind of with um the craziest secret to keep for so long um that yeah she's now in the in the biggest tv show in the world well event coming out next year i mean definitely when she definitely deserves that because she's amazing in this film i know we're running out of time very quickly but i also wanted to ask you seem to enjoy working with elijah what is it about working with elijah that you love so much I mean, well, look, he's a friend as well, so that makes it a, a lot easier. And it's just like, you know, we worked with a lot of the same cr- key creatives on the on this film as we did on the last one. So it's kind of it was just, you know, getting the family back together again. Um, it doesn't feel like really. I mean, filmmaking's hard. It's always hard, but it's um, it's just so much easier when you have that kind of bond w- with with an actor. And Elijah and I go uh, way back now and yeah it's just it's just easy and he's kind of like the glue on a set he's just been on he's so experienced he's usually the most experienced person on the set and he's um just got such a deep knowledge he makes your life a lot just so easy as a director um he he switches into the character really quick very minimal kind of direction from me needed honestly because he kind of just gets it we talk about it what we need for the character and then he's just he's just on the money every single take like he hates me because i'm kind of like it's good after one take <laughs> uh, and he's like can i do a couple more mate um so yeah he, he just makes it a joy you know to film and I, I will just uh if i can i'll just keep making films with that guy constantly yeah definitely so and just to finish off quickly what would you like to say to people out there who are heading into cinemas to check out bookworm I would just say, look, if you're, if you're a little bit over the whole sort of spandex explosions kind of films that seem either for kids or slightly too... Yeah, you know, we just made, kind of made a film that's, that I hope, and it seems to be working for the audiences here, that it just really appeals to everyone from 8 to, to 80. You know, it seems like it's crazy, but it, because we didn't, um, you know, target it down to kids and throw a couple of adult jokes in it, it just feels like it's... It's written for, um, you know, a, a general family entertainment. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I think I think it's a funny throwback. It's a type of film that doesn't seem to be in cinemas anymore. Um, and there's definitely a, a portion of the audience that are really responding to that kind of, yeah, old school nod. 